Joining me in the studio for more discussion on clinical trials is Jeremy Konaindijk, Senior Policy Fellow with the Center for Global Development, and he previously led USAID's Ebola response. Jeremy, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. So uh, could you please elaborate on how essential communities were for the success of clinical trials during the Ebola outbreak? What we found with the entire outbreak response was that community participation and community trust were absolutely crucial to success. So we saw that in every area. Uh, it's particularly important for clinical trials because those are by nature experimental and the outcome isn't known. It's not a miracle drug. Um, there can be a lot of uh, rumors and mystery about it if it's not well explained. So the, having good science is not enough. That needs to be understandable and accessible to the population you're working with in the trial. And when we know how dangerous and infectious Ebola is, uh, tell us about what it took in terms of uh, the work that the, the researchers did. Mm -hmm. What did it take to, for safety mm -hmm. and, and also to come up with a positive result? Sure. Uh, it, health worker safety was a critical uh, a critical risk and a critical ultimately success factor in containing this outbreak. So that's why this kind of research is so important. You know, health workers are the most at risk in this kind of an outbreak because they're on the front lines, they're providing the services, um, and they're crucial for that reason to the success of any effort to contain an outbreak. So when you have no therapeutics and no vaccines, there's a, there's a real chance that a lot of them could, could die, as we saw in, in the early days of this outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, Investments in things like invention, infection prevention and control are also extremely important. The, the outbreak was able to spread as much as it did in those early, in those early months because the, the uh, mechanisms and the systems in place for preventing infection spread in health centers were very weak in the three countries. Mm. Now, how can, uh, when we look at the, the, what happened with the Ebola outbreak, mm. what were some of the lessons learned mm. in terms of uh, moving forward uh, that other countries can replicate. Sure. Preparedness makes a huge difference. Uh, it's not an accident that this disease, which in addition to Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia, mm -hmm. also popped up during this outbreak in Mali, Senegal, and Nigeria. It didn't take off in those latter three countries. And uh, they were better prepared. They had somewhat better health systems. No, not, not hugely strong health systems in every case, but they had better preparedness and, and stronger systems. And having that little bit of extra preparedness made a lot of difference. So things like good diagnostic systems, good you know, a basic laboratory capacity to be able to diagnose the disease, good surveillance so that when some strange disease is emerging in a remote part of the country, the government's public health systems can detect that early on, route it to the lab for identification, and good public information and public awareness uh, the other huge lesson, as I, as I mentioned earlier, is good infection prevention and control. And that's something that you need not just for Ebola, not just for some strange or novel infectious disease. It's very important for the day-to-day -day work of these centers. But countries that li have limited resources, as yeah. we saw, what do they do when you look at uh, mm -hmm. the way that you have to share, to spread the resources? Yeah. How, how do these countries know that, okay, perhaps something will happen, we need yeah. to put that much into preparedness. Mm -hmm. How do you determine that? Yeah. So there is a system that the world has developed now for conducting uh, peer evaluations of countries' preparedness. It's something called the joint external evaluation uh, is the technical term, but basically what it is. Uh, a group of people come in and they evaluate a country's level of preparedness and the strength of some of these systems and make recommendations of where those investments should be targeted. Okay. There is a question about how that should be paid for because you know, a lot of these countries don't have uh, huge health resources and they need to be very strategic about how they allocate them. So there's a, real, a role there for international assistance and uh, support from the World Bank and other donors to also help with that. Okay, and quickly now, having gone through this experience, do you think uh, the world is better prepared for perhaps another mm -hmm. Ebola outbreak or another disease outbreak mm -hmm. of that extent? I think the world is much better prepared for another Ebola outbreak because the awareness of it is much higher mm -hmm. and of course the, the, the understanding of how to defeat it um, is, is much more widespread at this point and we have a vaccine so that's, that's huge. I'm less confident about some other new disease that could be on the horizon. I think what we saw with Ebola is that the world's systems are still too weak to contain this kind of an event. Mm. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank we you, appreciate pleasure. your time. Thank you. And that was Jeremy Konaindijk. He's a senior policy fellow with the Center for Global Development.